Today we are talking about the top three reasons that people get stuck and are unable to really move forward with the things that they want to do. So I'm here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Kelly is here as well, living abroad, doing things a little bit differently. And I talked to so many people back in the States or in other countries who may have their normal jobs, their normal life, and a lot of times they're not super satisfied with it, but there are a lot of reasons that they feel really stuck. So we're gonna talk about those reasons and hopefully give you some tools to kind of break out of that. Yes. <laughs> so one of the main things I think a lot of people get stuck with is worried about what other people will think if they do something really weird and different. Yes. How did you encounter that? How do you see that showing up? I agree with that. Uh, so many times often what will happen is, especially like your family members, if you've got an idea, they're like, well, you know, that's a weird idea. You really need to reel that in, get a traditional, a real job. But I like to remind people that the post-it note guy literally put together colored scratch paper on a pad and he is a billionaire. So, you know, we have to really kind of remind ourselves that we each have our own talents, we each have our own passions. So when other people are projecting that onto you, they don't know your vision, they don't know your story. So in order for you to really be true to you, we, we're all born with a natural talent of, yeah. of our own. And if you've got an idea that you want to, you know, bring to the market, Sometimes, yeah, you got to overcome, but you know what? We, we've all had challenges in life. It's just a matter of how important is this for you to live a fulfilled life. And it's tough, though, because I think as humans, especially as Americans, we're taught about being individuals and being strong, and that's important. But at the same time, I think sometimes we can forget that I feel like humans are also kind of like herd animals, right? <laughs> we like the group. We like being comfortable. You know, we need each Accepted. other. Yes. We want to be accepted. So when someone tell, when you have someone and you come to one of your friends or family members like, all right, I'm going to move and I'm going to start my own business and I'm going to do all these things. And you come to them and you're so excited. Oh, I've had plenty of conversations where you tell people something you're so excited. And by the end of the conversation, and your self-doubt and feel like feeling like defeated and deflated. Right. Because sometimes yes. family and friends, they can tell you a whole list of all the possible things that could go wrong. And then all of a sudden, it's easy to get bummed out. Exactly. And if it's somebody that you respect somebody that you admire, somebody that you look up to, if they say, oh, that's a bad idea, you really start to review that. If it's, if it's somebody that's a little flighty, you're like, well, you know what, I'm gonna, but right. if it's like your mom or, you know, your, your parents, your, you know, it's like close family members, right. your best friend that you've had since right. kindergarten, you know, um, you start to feel like I'm second, you know, maybe I'm not looking at all the avenues. Maybe this isn't the best idea, but it is. <laughs> it's the best idea, like, ever. Because you know what the other thing is, and the reason why I think it's important to push ahead, right? Like, your parents might have your best interest in, in mind, your friends might be giving you the best advice they're capable of giving you in that situation. But at the end of the day, we all have to live with the results of our decisions or indecisions. Exactly. So if you have a great idea, I think the reason that you have to push ahead with it is because what if you know yeah. what if you never go forward with that and you live your whole life you always have those doubts and you know i have some friends that told me ideas that they had 10 years ago they never acted on it and guess what other people have acted on those ideas and are making money from it and exactly. are happy and thriving exactly so it's like i think that sometimes we can be afraid to do something but we should really be afraid to not do something exactly then you also have to look at me personally when when i share an idea with someone and they, you know, again, meaning well, and they start to really kind of say, well, that's not a good idea. I look at the value of their life. Yeah, sure. You know, because again, if you're an, un if every Friday we're getting together and you're drinking yourself into oblivion, living for the weekend because you hate your job, you know, that, that speaks a lot to what you're willing to do or what you're willing to sacrifice so that you can have the things that you feel like are quote unquote um, important. So, you know, if, if I'm coming from a position of, I'm already miserable, um, I'm not really creative and I don't really, so I don't fully understand what that is. And if I haven't figured out what my own joy yeah. is required, you know, then that, that makes it that much more difficult for me to really listen to what you have to say. That is an important point, which is I think, Keep in mind who the messenger is that's giving you the advice. If you're getting entrepreneurship advice from someone who's never been an entrepreneur, question that. If you're getting travel tips from someone who's never left their city of origin, <laughs> might not be the best advice. But at the same time too, even if you are getting advice from people who've done in the field of what you want to do, it doesn't mean if they give you advice that's contrary that you still shouldn't press ahead with it, you know? But I do think it's important 
get advice from people, listen to everyone, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to make a decision for yourself. Exactly. Right? It's exactly. about feeling free. It really is about feeling free. It's about who are you looking at in the mirror, whose thoughts are you, you waking up and going to bed with, yeah. and if no matter what you're doing, if that idea is pressing on you and it's bugging you, then you, you really need to review that regardless of how difficult it is to dismiss those in your life, the ones that are, you know, that, that mean the most to you sometimes. And I think that that truly makes it that much more difficult when you're talking to people that you really care about and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing because we yeah. start to think that they're taking it personally. We start to think that they're like, well, you know, you think that I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. You, or maybe you, they'll be mad at you yes. if you do something contrary to what they said. Exactly. Exactly. But we can't live for those people because the truth is if they're your friends, they will love you and support you no matter what. Exactly. Like if they're your family, they will be there for you. Even if the if it turns out to be a terrible idea, no one bought your popsicles, you wanted to make some special organic vegan popsicles I'll buy them by the way <laughs> but Me no too. one else other than us wanted to buy your popsicles and then your business fails your friends should still be there for you your family should still be there supporting you and not have to rub it in your face exactly right? and I want to jump on something that you said because I want people this is the other can, can I jump ahead yeah a yeah bit? let's do it she mentioned um, you know if she, the two of us are the only two buying vegan popsicles making coconut um, and watermelon um, <laughs> but um, she mentioned if your business fails honestly if you learn something you didn't fail right. and think about this also the people that advised you not to do it you still did more than they did so you didn't fail you That's learned true. something it is and it's important i think to frame things in that positive sense as well right, right. a failure if you learn from it is still a learning opportunity exactly. so you just take what you learn and you put that into the next business exactly so maybe one next thing, time you make coconut watermelon mix you know. And location matters. If you sell those vegan coconut popsicles that we want, maybe you need to come to Chiang Mai, hang out with us, and sell it directly yes. to us. Can we sell that customers. stuff in Iceland? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Know your market. Do some research. Exactly. So family and friends can mean the best, but advice, advice from people can definitely get you stuck if you're worried about those things. But other things that can get you stuck is feeling kind of comfortable in your nine to five job. You know, and sometimes when I had my job, I didn't really enjoy it. Sorry if any of my fellow colleagues happen to watch this. I wasn't happy there. <laughs> but it wasn't even so much the job as I didn't feel inspired. And I think a lot of people feel uninspired at times at their jobs, but it's like, what else am I supposed to do? Right. I have to eat. I have to feed my family. I have to pay for the rent. Yes. And it's interesting to me that you say that because a lot of business coaches will tell you when you're putting together your business, what's your why? And I'm actually the opposite of that. I actually tell people your why is why you still work for somebody else. Yeah. Because why I work is because I have children that I need to feed. Why I work is because I don't want my lights to go off. You know, those right. are the reasons. Those are the things that keep you bound to the things that make you feel like you've got security. Yeah. It's like, why are you stuck? That's why that, that mortgage is yeah. why. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if you were to sit down and really look at the who of who you are and, and the what of what you need to really find real happiness, first of all, a lot of us are bogged down in things that society told us that we needed. You didn't need that Mercedes Benz. That Chevy would have worked just fine and it would have cost you a lot less money. But we had to impress other people who aren't writing the check. And again, right, it's coming back to other people because I think that is so true. I think a lot of times, like, why do we want the status items and whatever? It's not because... It's not really for us. Like, we want to look good, right? right like, right. we want to look good for other people. If no one would ever see that fancy car, if no one would ever know, would you still really want it? So if it's a fast car, I would still want it. Like, <laughs> a fast car would be for me. Yeah. But Give I think... Give me a driver. <laughs> she wants a driver. I want it myself, just, like, speeding down the road, okay? But I do think a lot of times, like, we want these other things, not even for ourselves. It's because, like, we're told, like, well... What does success look like? Well, we're told as kids that success is the big house, you know, certain number of bedrooms, it's a fancy car. Like, that means you've made it. The designer bags right. come with the designer debt. It comes with the designer debt. And the designer stress. Right, right. So you're not happy, but you've got all the trappings of success. Right. But you're not really finding any real joy in what it is that you're doing and what you're delivering. And for those of you whose why is your, you know, are your kids children learn by example so what you're teaching them is do things that make you unhappy for money for things that make you unhappy 
Yeah. So, you know, so you really need to look at the example that you're bringing when you're setting your goals yeah. for what you really want for your life. And you, I mean, and, and for me, I want my children to be free, not necessarily fi uh, financial free. I mean, I would love that or time free, but I mean, really free to to express ideas, to explore other cultures and countries. And you have to let go of the the mindset of, you know, why am I, you know, the, the, the job security or the, the Mercedes Benz or, you know, these kinds of things. You have to remember that there's more. These are diminishing or depreciating assets. Yeah. They're going to wear out. So this year, you know, the Mercedes may make you happy, but in three years when it starts breaking down, or five years when you start having repair issues, then guess what? Now you're like, oh, well, that Lexus is gonna make me happy. Now you're starting that vicious cycle all over again. But that Mercedes. Whenever is you're to looking you happy. for happiness, by the way, I'm not shooting mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're looking for happiness from material things, it's tough because they can break. Yes. You know, they're not stable or reliable in any way. And I mean, studies have shown. I was reading something not so long ago that people derive more enjoyment from experiences yes. rather than from things. So if you're spending your life collecting things yes that's tough. yes but I think that when you are feeling really tied to a job and when you have job security it is really scary so like I'm not faulting you it is scary to walk away from a stable job which also leads into the third thing that we were talking about that is why people get stuck which is fears you know it's very closely tied um, it could be fear of change, fear of failure, you know, all of these fears that kind of tie us to what's familiar. Because what's sad, I think, is that a lot of us are very comfortable with mediocrity. Yeah. Actually. It's true. You know, it's like our lives aren't that great in the States, but... It's what we know. It's what we know. It's comfortable. It's, comfortable, it's reliable. Right. You know what's going to happen. You know, like you can expect the outcome and that can feel safe. Until you get a pink slip. It, that is true. Until you get fired, until that day you get you get let go. Yes. So that job security isn't really job security. And I got you beat a little bit on age, so I'm gonna talk to a little bit to my generation Xers. So you, we were told, get a job, one job, pick yeah. one thing, stay with that for 20, 40 years, collect your pension. But how many people know somebody that got fired at the 18 year mark? No pension. 19 and a half year, no pension. The, the so, pension so plan wrong. was raided. So even if you stayed, no pension. And you diverted your dreams, your goals, your hopes, the things that really could have set you apart and made you truly in control of your own future for loyalty to a company that wasn't loyal to you in false security. Yeah, because I do think the interesting thing about like millennials and sort of the younger sort of generation now is that people aren't satisfied with just a job mm -hmm. anymore. Like, it's not enough. Exactly. Like, I think a lot of young people, we tell them, oh, you could have this job for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, my God. That That's sounds a commitment terrifying. and it's awful. <laughs> exactly. Like, if someone said that to me, like, oh, you could sit at this desk until you are 65. Oh, my God. Like, the panic that would surge through my body. Like, yeah. it sounds like a jail sentence. Yeah. You know, but I think that, and then after you're 65 and you retire, you can go get a job as a greeter at Walmart because your pension plan got raided and what you right. are getting in pension doesn't cost enough. You've got health care issues now and we all know that you've got to have... Listen, this is a million The cost different. of living goes yes. up every year, right? Yes. So the pension is really not going to be super comforting. But even the jobs that I've always had... There was no pension. No one even talked about I don't even think people my age or younger know what a pension is, I'm going to be honest. But I think that's why, you know, millennials are forging their own way. You know, I grew up in a time, there was some, you know, instability, you know, in my time, but not nearly what they have. They have, they're coming out of, of college with five and six figure debt. You know, oh, yeah. and the interest rates and the job market and, you know, and the whole nine yards. And a lot of people have this idea that the millennials feel kind of entitled. But I think they're they, they are entitled. I mean, honestly, yeah. you go to university, which is what we tell people to do. You collect six figures worth of debt because that's what we tell people to do in a specific field, because that's what we tell people to do. And then you come out and there is no job. Yeah. You did everything you were supposed or to do. there's a job, but it's like paying 40 grand and yeah. you're in Manhattan. That means poverty, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like the, the standards certainly aren't matching up with people's, I think, expectations yes. a lot of the time. So fear is a tough one, you know? And if you do decide to forge out onto your own, if you've been thinking about it, if you're toying with ideas, 
I think that, you know, I have another chat that I did with someone else. I'll put a link in the bottom where we're talking about how to overcome certain fears and things like that because you don't have to wait. You don't have to quit your job right. to start planning for a life of freedom, right? And there are things you can do. You can start a business now. You can start an online career now. You can start figuring it out now. So we were radical, right? We left, you know, what we were doing. A lot of people come here to Chiang Mai just leaving what they're doing. But to be honest, a lot of people here are making a lot of money in Chiang Mai working yes. online. And a lot of people are having trouble making money online because it takes planning. It takes a while. So yes. if you are at home and you're thinking about wanting to set up a life of freedom for yourself, start now. Yes. You know, because that SEO can take some time to build, <laughs> you know. But, but here's the thing, though, is that people are consistently watching the Trashy Wives of Pick a City. That yeah. hour that you're dedicated to She said to the that? Trashy Wives of Pick a City. <laughs> that is hilarious okay sorry i had to stop that for a minute so, but i mean but that hour or whatever that time is that you're dedicating to that negativity you could be building a legacy to start on an online business number one you don't need a website you don't need a lot of money you i mean if you've got a paypal account and a um, facebook account and some knowledge between your ears, baby, we can we can make money at that. And Kelly is setting up a course about that yes. and some introduction. So if that's right, I'm gonna put a link to awesome. that as well. So that you can so that I you wasn't can trying get to get a shameless plug no, in. No, 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 but it's true and it's important information because you don't need a ton of money to set things up to start a business for yourself. You can do it with Facebook. You know, there's some tools that you can get into place so that you can start a business for yourself yes. without spending thousands of dollars. Like if you think you need to spend thousands of dollars, you can, but yeah. you definitely don't have to yes. and uh, I'm also going to be starting a whole series of chats that's talking about different ways to make money online to start people out because there are ways to kind of start building freedom and you don't have to just quit your job and then kind of be in the, in the deep end yeah you can you're welcome we're here in Chiang Mai you can come visit <laughs> we'll talk about it yes um, but you can definitely set yourself up for success and you know the fears and the worrying about what other people think <coughs> it doesn't me. have to define you it doesn't have to be limiting. It doesn't. And I, and I like kind of what, you know, one, one of the things that I want to share, um, you know, and you mentioned you can come here and hang out with us in Chiang Mai. Here's, here's a challenge that I would actually like to give your viewers, the ones that really want to, you know, you, you've had this idea in your mind. You've been thinking about starting a business. You've been thinking about, you know, moving abroad, whatever that is. But what I want people to do, because see what happens is we see our financial advisors, or we talk to, you know, we look at our bank accounts and we make a decision that we need millions of dollars to live a life that would make us happy. Yeah. But what I want you to do, this is my challenge, is I want you to sit down and decide where do you want to live? What, you know, what, like if you've got a, a Lexus or a Mercedes Benz and you bought it for the sake of luxury to please someone else, what it would cost you? Can you, can you get around your town in an Uber? Would it be cheaper if you're not going that many places? You know, look at the wear and tear and then look at the real costs of the life that you really want that would make you happy. Because what you will find in a lot of cases is many of us, if we're true to our hearts and our heads and what we really want that will really make us smile, things that we do for free. If yeah. you really look at it, you do not need a lot of money for that life. Yeah. I think a lot of people, we mindlessly spend money. You know, things that just, you know, yeah. just buy stuff. Five you know, million really pairs of shoes. It. She used to be a junkie. You only got two feet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I think it's important to take her challenge, to get clear in your mind and to really think about, you know, the things that make you Actually happy and that aren't just mindlessly spending money because the truth is you can divert some funds into building your business so you don't need thousands of dollars to start a website but you know what if you could hire a graphic designer with a few hundred bucks that could also be money well spent exactly. if you could hire someone to if you did want a website you know the learning curve can be steep in certain categories so you could reallocate money that you're not spending appropriately or exactly. effectively right. you know to build your business so exactly. there are a lot of reasons to stay stuck and yes. to stay with what you're doing and to stay complacent but there's one reason to do what you want to do which is you want to do it i love that i love that <laughs> you know that reason should trump all of the others i was you like know? waiting at the top i was like on the edge of my seat i was like what's that one reason <laughs> I love that. Because the you one reason do is because you want to do it. That's it. It doesn't matter if 
your sister thinks it's a bad idea, you don't have enough money, you know, you're worried about what's gonna happen. Like if you want to do it, that's it. Everything else is done. What you do then is you start taking steps. This is what I want to do. What do I need to do? What are the excuses that I've made up in my head? Forget those, put those to the side. Focus only on that goal and start doing it now. Exactly. Tomorrow is a trap. Yeah. I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> it may not come. Tomorrow is a trap. I was watching another video. I'll put this in the link because I'm actually obsessed. Yeah, I haven't okay. sent this video to you. Okay, okay. By the way, when I love a video, I send them to all my friends. <laughs> but this is a video of this woman, Mel Robbins. I don't know if you've heard of her. It was amazing. She was saying how you can't rely on motivation. That like self motivation is is a trap because it's never there. Like when oh, you need it. Hard. Yeah. So she has a whole thing that she does. Anyway, I'm not gonna rehash her thing. Um, I'm just gonna say, put the link in the bottom. If you're interested, you can watch the video because it's about how you just have to do stuff. I mean, that's the moral of the story. You just have to start doing it. Don't give yourself time to get worried. Don't give yourself time to make excuses because there's always a reason to not, not do, do. Yep. what you wanna do exactly. when it's different. Yes. You know, like if you want to do something different, you have to know that it's going to be uncomfortable. Because if it was comfortable, you'd already be doing it. And everybody else would too. Everyone else would too. But so it's just to know that like, okay, if I'm currently not a speaker and I want to start speaking, it's going to be uncomfortable to get there. Right. You know, and if you, but if you go and saying, oh, I want to be a speaker and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to feel great the first time I do it, that might not be true. It's probably not true. So just knowing yeah. you're going to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm also saying this for myself, <laughs> that I have to be uncomfortable. Well, I think, too, as, as entrepreneurs, um, you're always pushing, you're always stepping out of your comfort zone. If you're not, then you're not doing it right. Yeah. You know, as entrepreneurs, we, we're already, in a sense, risk takers. Mm -hmm. So you've always got to be pushing yourself to the next, to the next, to the next. You know what I'm saying? And then something else that you mentioned, and I, and I kind of wanted to go back and, and touch on this, and it's not so much as a fear as much as it is an excuse. There are a lot of people out there that go, well, you know, I'd like to start a business, but I don't know doing what. So I'm going to help you out with that. I'm going to liberate you. You know that one thing that everybody comes to you and they say, can you give me advice on that? That is a business because you've been given that for free. You know that. You've got that like down pat. It is your natural ability, your natural talent. It is going to be where you can bless the most people. So why not start there? There is always something. And you might have to reflect because it could be so obvious that you don't realize it. Mm -hmm. You know, but there is something that people come to you for. Like, I even felt like as a kid, I don't know, people sort of came to me for my thoughts or opinions. And I liked being in front of the camera, even as a kid. You know, I was always hamming it up. I had no problems, you know. So I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was that kid. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you think about, like, what are those things that are just so natural, you know, that are just there, that are just mm -hmm. you? that's what you should lean into exactly so i think you're exactly, exactly right the things that your friends come to you for the things that you've been doing since you were a kid the things that you excel at yes and man they're coming a mile a minute in my head here roman so then i'm gonna jump to another thing there are some of you that are going but i like my job i just can't stand my boss and my co-workers guess what you commoditize that <laughs> <laughs> you could fire your boss and then do the type of and, and, and this is the really cool thing about So when cool you say people could fire their boss, just like start the business on their own. Well, is that and, what you mean? But, but not even necessarily start the business on their own because if it's a brick and mortar and it's a corporation, all this there's all this stuff. But here's the really, really, really cool thing about what we do. You've got a job that requires ten tasks. Of those ten tasks, you hate eight of them. Your favorite are two. That's what you build your business on. You get to make this what you want to make this. But I mean, because there are people that, that really do dig their jobs. Like I, I loved what I did before I left the US. Um, she was in real estate. I can't imagine, I always hated all my jobs. Yeah, well, well I loved it. I didn't love my bosses. Yeah. And I ain't sorry if they see it. Uh, Cause I'm ignorant. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> but I didn't love my bosses. And I had some, some partners that were not the best partner for me let's just put mm -hmm. it that way um and so aspects of you know what i loved about the job i actually have involved in my business i may not be doing real estate anymore but the pieces of that that i really enjoyed that gave me the most that, that adrenaline rush yeah that's what i brought into my my consulting business right you know 
I love that. So it's like, it's just about doing what you want to do. That's mm-hmm. what this whole thing is about. Yeah. It's about doing what you want to do, not what your family thinks or your friends think. You know, it's just about doing this because, okay, I do believe in reincarnation. Okay. But let's say all we know for certain really is this shot yeah. at life. That's all we can focus on right now. So living this life in the as way we see fit. Can, yeah, yes. as best we can. Like, not banking on, well, you know, maybe some other time. Maybe in the next life, I'll get to it. Maybe in the next life, I'll do what I want to do. But actually doing those things yeah. now. So, yeah. I well, and, and here's the other thing, too. You know, people, there, there are some people that are just completely afraid, period, that are, I mean, like, no matter what you do, they're just, like, gripped with fear because they're like, well, what if it goes wrong? What if I fail? What if, you know, all these these what ifs. And I what want, if it doesn't? But, that's what I was just curious about. I yeah. want you to ask yourself, number one, what if it doesn't? Then I want to drop, I want to get philosophical on you real quick. And I want you to understand that whether you pack up all your things and move abroad, or whether you sit on the porch of life in your rocking chair and watch everybody else live their lives, the leading cause of death is life. Nobody is getting out alive. Therefore, why would you not do everything that you could to just be like, wah, all the way through it? Exactly, live it up. It's made to be lived, not to be coddled, not to be, you know, nurtured in a sense that, oh, we can't, we gotta protect it. Because we know that even with our children, which are, some of our ideas are kind of, these are our babies, They, they come from our hearts. You know, and if we coddle them and we think we're going to protect them from the world, disappointments still happen. Yeah. You know, things that bad things still happen. So you're not protecting yourself. You're not protecting anybody from what you're protecting yourself from a life well lived. And that's a great disservice to you, honestly. I love it. I'm going to leave it on that. (laughs) That was good. (laughs) (laughs) There is so much you can do with this life. So. Do it all. And in the meantime, I'm going to put links in the bottom of this for all the things that we reference. There's a lot of great content out there, and a lot of it is free. So there's really no excuse to not soak up as much information and learn as much information. And by the way, speaking of things that are free, some things aren't, like my Patreon. (laughs) You can support me in making these videos and in making all of these things that I'm doing in these journeys by signing up for my Patreon. It's just a couple bucks a month and you get all sorts of freebies and giveaways. So I'll put that link in there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye guys.